All right, guys. So we're still house shopping here in San Diego for ourselves, for our investment property. And this week, I came across some pretty quirky homes that I want to share with you. So to start, this one is a dome house, which if you can see, like super quirky. And I love quirky houses. So we actually didn't tour this one. This one has been on my list to go see. And my husband was just like, no, not not happening. But look at three, almost 3,000 square feet and pretty good price per square foot. But I believe there's a little bit of a design challenge, like when you don't have square walls, but how cool. It's like almost A-frame meets biodome. I don't know. I thought it was really fun. It's up in Fallbrook, which is kind of the countryside outside of San Diego. It's about an hour from where we are. So I don't know if it was really actually something we would have done, but there are abundant amount of avocado trees. So not only is it this quirky, it obviously needs a total reno, but it's this quirky dome house, but the property is really cool. And I love, I mean, look at this fireplace. It almost looks like it's a plastered or drywall. I don't know. I just think it's so cool. And it would be unique. Like how cool would this be as an Airbnb, something special that people could stay in and say, you know, they stayed in a dome house. I do. <laughs> I think there is enough walls here that you can, you know, design around it. There's plenty of space. And I forget, let me look at this one again. So it's a double dome home. So, and it has, that's right. It has 2.2 acres and the middle, the main living area is on one level, including the ba master bedroom, has soaring ceilings, a wraparound huge deck. Okay, where's the part about the avocado trees? This wonderful property has both family fruit trees and approximately 50 avocado trees. Like you could sell your own avocados. Like that's amazing. Um, tons of parking. Yeah, I just thought it was really cool. So they're kind of, yeah, they're calling it an A-frame dome. That's exactly the architectural style. Okay, here's the sad part. This house has been on the market for 275 days. So quirky does not win the race. Like a lot of people, this is not the style they're going for. So when the re one of the reasons we didn't tour it is just as an investment property, it's probably not going to be a great idea. Like that's the thing about quirky homes is they're really, you might find that one person that loves it, but if it's an investment and you think it's really cool, it might not appeal to the masses and it might be a longer time you have to hold on to it. So for us, it just wasn't going to work in that. But I, I just wanted to show you guys like there, there are some kind of unique homes, even though this one's not old. I bet you it's like, again, probably 90s. Yeah, 1992. Um, it's got like a unique little vibe to it. Okay, so on the flip side of that, we toured an old home. And this one we actually saw. Uh, it's the oldest house in La Mesa, California, which La Mesa is just a little city east of San Diego, really close. And this property, let's see, I believe it was 18... 1891. So oldest house in La Mesa and it had been completely restored. So this was really fun to see because the person that owned it went through and meticulously like hand built the cabinets to look just like it did back in the day. Um, the funny thing is, so when you walk up to this house, um, this is actually the front door, but we're in the backyard right now. So they had a picture of this house back from the 1800s and it was this beautiful rolling hill with the house situated on top. And obviously when they turned it into a neighborhood, they orientated like and developed the roads to where it actually made you enter the house from the back. Like you have to walk around. And so the curb appeal actually isn't as much as you see from the front. Like this porch is so beautiful. They had redone all the spindles. They'd freshly painted it. In person, it's a much prettier color. It actually has this like ombre accent on the, the top side. I don't know if I can find that for you, but um, oh, there it is right there. So there's this like ombre accent. It looks really bright green on here, but in person, it's this much more like subtle kind of muted green. And it was just a really cool house. So this is actually what they're calling the front, but it's more the side. It has a little plaque that says historic. Um, and then when you walk in, so obviously the outside is really cute and charming, but when you walk in, it's literally like they had all these pictures from um, like when it was first built before it kind of gotten changed over probably through the 70s and 80s. And so they tried to take it back, like everything from the colors to the fireplace mantle to the original floors. Um, these were pictures that they had left out just kind of showing you stained glass, light fixtures. So it's actually deemed historic and it's in the Mills Act, which what that means is 
you get a lot of tax breaks for having a house like this. It was actually something we considered for like 2.2 seconds um, because it was also uh, zoned commercial. So you could turn this into a bed and breakfast. You could make this a haunted house because if you look in the description, it even said it was like haunted by a little boy, which some people love that and some people don't. I probably am on the side that doesn't really like it that much. But there was so much charm and character and original um, just that they kept to this house, which was really cool, really fun to see. And this, these are the houses I remember seeing like in Oregon when we would, you know, just like some random person would live there. It wasn't even like deemed historic at the time. But again, I was telling you how San Diego is not the most old houses in historic. So when there is one, it's like they really bring it back to life. But um, yeah, original cabinets and everything. And or I'm sorry, he uh, restored those to be original. But yeah, super cool. Look at that carpet. That carpet and the um, window covering. So one question I had for the real estate agents was like, because it's historic, are you not allowed to change anything? Because I think it would be a shame to come in here and change everything. So that pretty quickly after we considered it for a hot second, we knew it wasn't for us because I love the design part. I love redoing stuff. So I wouldn't want to go and undo something that someone just restored, but it's not my style or my taste. So I said, you know, for it being deemed historic, like, do you also have to keep it exactly alike? And she said, I don't think the inside, but the outside, obviously there's like, um, kind of guidelines they have to stay by. Now, this was an add-on. They added an upstairs attic to get some more square footage, but they did a pretty good job kind of, um, again, this green comes off really bad on the computer, but, you know, they added the stained glass and it gave a lot of square footage. It was actually a cute little place. You could picture like a kid being up here and then downstairs was actually the master. So this was a very tiny house to begin with, and it's still pretty small now. This added space just gave it a little bit more, but something that was really cool. And I don't know if we got extra footage of it, but the garage they added on. So it was not originally there and they matched the style really well. It was funny because it's not permitted, which is a common thing that I think people run into. And I know one of you guys commented on that is look out for stuff that's not permitted. And it's so true. Multiple places we've been to have an ADU or a garage or something that's not permitted. This one didn't have permits for it, but it was really cool. It had a wood, a workshop all underneath, a working bathroom, and then the upstairs loft was, they had matched this window style and it was a ton of space. And I think it could be a really cool house. The people that had lived in it lived there for 30 years. They raised their kids there. They always knew they were going to restore it. And then they just decided to move. So I don't know if someone will come in like a lawyer and just use it. Since it's commercial, they can use it as an office. Um, that might be something that someone does. Or maybe someone's really into the style and they've always wanted to live there and they'll go antiquing and fill it up. But um, it was one we looked at for a quick second. I thought it would be fun to show you guys. And then the last one. Okay. So this one we did not see, but we have looked at it extensively <laughs> on the MLS. So from first picture, we really liked this picture because, or we really liked this house because I love fireplaces. I love a statement fireplace, and this one couldn't get more statement. It's smack dab in the middle of the house. The fire or the kitchen is actually built around it. And I thought, what a great space to work with. I could totally picture redoing this kitchen to kind of orientate around the fireplace better, having a really cool dining table um, and dining space. And then it opens up, maybe even open these doors up and what a great living space. But then the more we started to go through the listing, it got a little bit weird. Uh, so backyard's pretty decent. Front yard's pretty decent. I mean, everything's pretty normal. And then it got weird and we were like, okay, cool. So is this like the downstairs space? Because what you'll notice is there is a kitchen a dining room, that fireplace and like a small living room. And then you come in here and it's just like furniture after furniture after furniture. So what you're seeing is a dining area, a little entry console. Then you see a living area, a pool table, a bar. On this wall, there's like another, I think it's like an entertainment area, a desk. There's stairs leading down here that go to some empty open space that has like arcade toys. See, this is the, this is like the, what we think happened, and I'll take you all the way through so you can see. Yeah, so there's some arcade games. Um, this looks like a tunnel. Like, I don't, this doesn't even look like an interior of the house. It doesn't connect very well. And where's the living room? Like, is this all the living room? So we dissected this house 
quite a few times because we actually considered it. It sat on the market for a really long time. Um, the area wasn't great. It's a little bit close to a freeway, which noise is a huge um, f defining factor for us saying no to a house. So we went back and forth. But this is what we think happened. We think where you see the original roof line when you walk into the house, um, we think they extended it. And so this, you can see the old stairs. Um, and we think this was like the patio and they extended it open, but they added square footage in like all the wrong places. They added so much living space. That's almost, it's just one big giant great room that I think people are having a really hard time visualizing what to do. And we went back and forth through it. And what we ultimately determined is, so this is a bedroom. This is a bedroom off the pool table. Again, really random kind of thing. But what we ultimately realized is that there would have to be some walls moved around. It's just not worth it for the price of the home. Um, the pool's in decent shape. It's not a great neighborhood. It's kind of one of those one one of those neighborhoods that's like next to a great neighborhood. This street itself isn't really anything to like look at. Um, but yeah, so okay, so going back to the beginning, I wanted to show you that one area when you walk in. So this is where I think the original house was. I think it was an entryway. You walked in and this was the back patio or something, or it was maybe even the garage and they moved the garage over. We're not really sure, but those those double doors are original. So that had to have been like some sort of entryway. But I think people are having a hard time seeing what to do with this. Like, what do you do with this this area through here? And there's not enough bedrooms. There's like just really not. And for um, let's see, how much is this house? I think it's, yeah, 825 to 32. It's 3,000 square feet. So it's like a ton of square footage, but those bedrooms, like one of them's unusable. I don't even know how they're calling it bedroom because it doesn't have a closet. So this is one that I think has some potential, but it's definitely scaring people off. It kind of scared us off. It just seemed like way too many walls to move around just to make it like a three or a four, two with like some interesting living space. So so thanks for watching. I promise not every video will be me staring at the computer, scrolling through houses. We have a big announcement coming soon. So subscribe and I will catch you here at the next video.